Hey guys, welcome back to yet another P3D video. It's probably going to be my last time saying this for a while, if ever again. Um, but today we are going to do a flight in the form of a this is how I do things flight. It's not quite a tutorial in the sense that there are some things that I might do that might be different to what is actually done in real life but I'm gonna show you how to fly from point A to point B with the Dash 8 Q400 by Majestic now in my opinion this is one of the most complex aircraft um, that you can literally um, fly in the sim to date even though that you've got um, jets like Airbus and Boeing and Embraer, which people can arguably say is more complex than the Dash 8, which is a turbo turboprop, the aircraft isn't what I would call dummy friendly. So there are lots of ways that things can go very badly for you. Um, on the dash it that wouldn't normally happen on say an Airbus or PMDG because the systems are a lot more intuitive and there's a lot more control done by the actual um, autopilot in relation to handling the aircraft and its configuration and stuff like that so I'm going to show you how I fly the dash it from point A to point B and the reason I'm doing this is because I've had this aircraft for about three years, two years maybe. And it took a lot of watching several videos to actually be able to grasp the concept of flying the Dash 8 from startup or from cold and dark all the way to. Um, setting up the FMC, setting up the aircraft for flight, takeoff, cruise, landing, and then shutting down the aircraft. And the main reason for this is that there's so much involved that persons ha that have made videos have done them in parts and haven't done all the parts, which means I'm taking something from one person and then taking something from another person and then when I get to a certain point in um, the flight, I realize that part is missing and I don't know how to continue. So this video is going to be a very long video and it is going to go through the whole process from setting the aircraft to landing. And I'm also going to show you how to take information from the flight plan, where to put it, a few gotchas as it relates to the FMC and inputting information and then um, we do our flight from Hanover to Stuttgart um, that's about 230 miles distance I will cut the video um, in certain parts because it's a lot of talking and I'm gonna get parched and there are parts where I won't be doing anything in the flight except monitoring the systems so for those parts I'm going to cut out and condense it so that the file is not that big a file. So right now we are at gate 7 at um, Hanover International Airport by Just Sim. This was released a couple weeks ago, maybe a month. And I've got the aircraft not in the cold and dark stage. But I've got it in the default stage so unless you go into the settings of the aircraft and put it into defaults um, to cold and dark this is the state that you're actually going to get the aircraft where the flight management computers are off you've got a couple warning lights on the parking brake is off um, I've moved my throttles to the idle position because it doesn't um, sit the same way with the Airbus and stuff like that I usually have them further back 
but then that will put it into max reverse trust on the dash it you can set this up to your liking but I tried it and I made a mess of it and then had to uninstall and reinstall again so I'm not going to go through that it's literally showing you how I set it the aircraft now disclaimer here it um, there are some things that I might do that might not be in the correct order but it is something that you have to do in order to get the plane off the ground without having alarm bells and stuff like that so if there's any Q400, Q300 pilots out there feel free to correct me if my flow is a little bit out of sync um, as I have not gone through the 100 pages of um, documentation from Majestic I don't have the time for it um, so I'm just sharing what I have learned along the way in order to get my um, flights done without having a lot of alarms or any alarms going off so first thing I'm going to look at is the overhead I'm not going to go through the test or anything like that the only thing that you need to do up here when you first come into the aircraft if you're using the external power your main bus tie should be on and when you turn off the external power you'll turn that back off as well next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to move over here to windshield heat I put that to normal I'm going to put my position lights on so that the virtual world can actually see that the aircraft um, extremities where the extremities of the aircraft is in relation to the wing and if you want to have the announcements and stuff like that then you're gonna have to open the doors but before we get to all that I'm just going to go through with my flow and I tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it so right here on the right side you're gonna see these vents I always put them to open first thing otherwise after a while you'll find that the windshield will start to fog up and obviously that's going to make it hard to see if you want to extinguish any warning bells or warning lights eliminated just click on it and it will stop you're going to see that they will come on again as we do certain things so um, I'll move the yoke out of the way because you're going to need to see what I'm doing there at a later point in the flight and so you just click on this button here and it disappears and then when you want it to come back you just put it back again parking brake is going to be on as my amber caution light and then I've got my control lock on now now when you started the aircraft if you want to do your flight controls check you need to turn back off this control lock otherwise the yoke will not move um, and right down here you can see the controls for the ailerons, the yoke, the elevator and so on so if you have the control lock on that will not move next thing I'll do is I turn on my instruments I bring them up one by one unfortunately with the dash shades you can't have two of your FMC's open at the same time like this so you just click on on and I click on the next one it's going to load and then it's going to go through its own checks just to make sure everything is fine so you see pass at all of them once it's completed and then it's going to bring you to the landing page where you can check um, cross fill anything I'll go more into detail in that in a second um, you can go into your nav database to make sure you've got the correct date so this expires on the 12th of August 2020 we're now on the 8th of August so that's fine I can click at set on both next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the instruments down here just by clicking on which is pretty much self-explanatory and I'm going to put my transponder on standby now I'm going to assume that you guys know how to do flight plans you've got different options you've got PP, uh, PPFX I think or PPX and then you've got SimBrief and there might be others out there 
I use Simbrief and I've taken the liberty of making a video sorry not making a video making a flight plan before now you would have noticed on the introduction of the video I am in a Luthor's original jet but my call sign is Eurowings I'm not flying on Vaxim obviously because I need to pay more attention to what I'm telling you than what I'm actually um, would normally be doing on Vaxim so for that reason I have um, opted not to do an online flight I will still do a recorded flight with my VA which is Luthanza Virtual Group I've already got the air card started so I'm gonna assume for the sake of argument that you guys know how to file a flight plan and also how to read a flight plan so I've got my route here and we're going to be using the Whiskey Romeo Bravo 3Y um, departure and we're going to use the Bravo Alpha Delta Sierra 2 Alpha arrival for the flight now before I go too far into this we're going to go back to the systems and just before I go any further um, for you guys who are watching this video for just the takeoff and for the landing I'm actually going to put checkpoints in the comments below so that you don't have to go through all of this because obviously that's not what you're watching the video for and that way you can just fast forward to the points that you actually want to see for those who might have some knowledge of how to fly the airplane and there's a few things that you might be curious of I'm also gonna have timestamps there for what I uh, perceived to be the most important things that you actually need to know and do that way you also can skip through to the points that you find relevant in the video but for everyone else that is new to the dash and want to learn from scratch how to get it done then feel free to continue and you can ignore what uh, comments that I'm going to put in here now a couple gotchas you're going to find out on all default aircraft and pretty much all add-ons by pushing the letter B on your keyboard it automatically gives you the Q&H for the airport that you're at um, it reads the weather and it automatically puts it on the system that will not work with the dash 8 you literally have to use this knob here to set the Q&H and I'm using Active Sky so that's where I'm getting my weather from so we've got the QNH of 1020, which is 30.12. So 30.12. Here we go. And for some reason, yeah, that's right. So 30.12 there and then you have to do the same thing here with the backup altimeter because they're not sync like it would be with jets you don't have that option to sync it so again 30.12 30 30.12 and that's 1020 so now you've got your barometer set properly or your altimeter set properly and you've got a uh, altitude at the airport of around 200 feet this is an important figure as you're going to need it when you're doing the performance calculations for the aircraft the next thing that might be surprising to you guys if you're new to the dash 8 is that the dash 8 does not does um, do its own performance you have to manually do everything with this aircraft which makes it a lot more to do in the setup but also a lot more rewarding once you've gotten everything done so I'm going to put away the weather for now I've got my flight plan here other things you're going to need will be the module from Majestic to inject the actual fuel into the aircraft as well as the passengers before I get to that what I'm going to do is because I like to hear my announcements from the captain not so much the music but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into data and then I'm going to go into services then I'm going to go to exits I'm going to open my forward pass which is my forward door 
my aft packs. Now you have to wait until the arrows come up. Aft packs. That's open. And sometimes if you do aft bag, like if you're loading GSX, it's going to ask for aft bag. Sometimes if you click on aft bag, it actually closes or open back the aft packs. It's a bug. Um, so you just click on it again and it will open the correct one or close the correct one. Half the entire flight crew. So just like I've said, I've clicked on half bike and it's closed the half packs. So again, I'll click on half packs to reopen. Once the arrows come back up, I'll click on half bike again. And there we go, we've got all three open. So outside view, you've got the front door. some reason it doesn't want to zoom in now which is great just great ah, there we go keyboard had just gone to sleep so usually in real life depending on the airport you would actually have a stairs with the aircraft for the back door um, without needing um, ground handling but in the same it doesn't have that so we use GSX for that got the front door and then they load usually in the back here this plane is very low to the ground in terms of the nose wheel so most of the passengers are actually seated in the back and then you've got the bags in the back to keep the um, some of the weight off of the nose and again we are going to go through how to load the aircraft so that you're within limits and that you don't have the aircraft flying in a configuration that's going to be difficult for you to actually handle so let's go back inside and let's start with extinguishing that warning you're gonna have a lot of these warnings up here illuminated these will go off as we go through um, as we go through our checks so no smoking will be on fast and seat belts will be on I actually load I don't use GSX for loading um, fuel I will use GSX for loading passengers so I can actually call that now obviously my parking brake has to be set it sets off another alarm I need to set my fuel off now if you want to move two of these at the same time you just need to right click and pull them down if you want to use them um, differently and you only have one control for them you can actually use the mouse um, left click and hold and it will move one separately and right click and hold and you move two separately so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it at feather because I don't have two controls I put my mouse at feather um, I set it for feather with my actual control I know it's not having it okay let's try this again there we go so what I do is I set my control as um, for feather but I use the mouse then to put it into fuel disconnect excuse me one second my dog is trying to get some attention go bed all right not going to use the jetway because it's a dash 8 and I've got front stairs so GSS is a little bit quirky here and you might find I might not actually get any back steps so you might see people actually doing a moonwalk into the aircraft from the back because they haven't actually sent 
they actually have a sink back stairs so that might be a little bit interesting later on in the video but it's neither here nor there so I've got my flight plan here and we're now going to import this into the FMC for the aircraft another gotcha that I've mentioned I think my engines are moving a bit so let's just tap them so they stop all right perfect another gotcha is that whatever you put into one FMC will not go over to the next FMC which brings me back to this button there next to the word xfill cross fill this is how you actually get information from one FMC over to the next and you have to be very careful the FMC that you want the information to come from it's not the FMC you're doing the cross fill from so I'm gonna say that again because I've made that mistake and I had to do everything all over again the information on the FMC is the one that you are not going to do the cross fill from so I'm going to use the pilot one which is the one that is up here right now I'm going to input all my information on here and I went, when I want the information to go over to the first officer one I am going to use the cross fill option on the first officer FMC if you do it the other way around all the information that you would have put in on the captain side when you click cross fill on the captain side you're going to erase because what you're essentially telling it is you're going to take the information that's over on the first officer side which is non-existent and put onto the captain side so for this I am going to go back to flight plan and first thing you're going to notice is the copy pilot route I click on that and you're going to see different flight plans that I have saved in the database so the one that we want to use is the first one that is showing up which is Hanover to Stuttgart and to select this you actually use the number so you click on the part here that's highlighted it's already highlighted so if it wasn't highlighted you will click there and then you put the number one and then you hit enter and it automatically puts your whole flight plan in this what don't um, include the star or the seed or the runway you actually have to manually put that in but as you can see I bring up the first officer one when you click on flight plan there's nothing there and that is because they do not communicate with each other what you put here on the captain side you then have to turn around and put on the first officer side but rather than doing that right now I'll do everything one time on the captain side and then I will cross fill it over to the first officer side so I click back on flight plan to go to the beginning I'm gonna click on the number one and then I'm going to click on data actually sorry it's supposed to be menu I haven't done this for a while so I'll go back there number one menu and then I'm going to do depart I go back to my flight plan so if I go down a little bit on my flight plan it actually shows the route right here so I'm taking off from runway 09 left so I'm going to choose number 2 which corresponds with 09 left hit enter and then it brings up the relevant stars for that um, departure Re relevant SID sorry star will be for arrival so back to the flight plan I am doing the WRB3Y departure which is number 7 so I'll click number 7 here and then that is it as far as my flight plan is concerned with the actual inputting the 
um, departure. So I've got my heading which is 197 degrees and because I did make some changes you're going to have some discontinues um, along the way. It's not here at the moment but it will be in a few seconds because I'm also going to put in my arrival. So again flight plan number 16 is EDDS menu arrival and it shows me the runways available which is 07 and 25 flight plan says 07 and then the bad 02 alpha arrival so number one corresponds with 07 I'll put that there number two corresponds with the star I'll put that there I click on approach to let it know that I am going to do the ILS so I'm going to choose number two it corresponds to the ILS click enter I click the LSK next to flight plan brings me back to my flight plan and now I'm going to go through and look for discontinuities discontinuities will not say discontinuities but you'll see this flashing no link which is pretty much the same thing I click on the LSK next to number 17 I click delete it flashes I click it again and it's gone now a warning to you you're only going to delete that no link once it is before your landing runway if you see a no link after your runway leave it alone because this is how the aircraft knows that from here you're going to be doing a miss approach procedure so it will put in the route for the miss approach if you delete that then if you should have to do a miss approach for whatever reason when you get to your arrival airport you're not going to know what to do because it's not going to be plotted in on your FNC now once I have all of this done the only thing left to do basically would be to put in my top of descent which you also have to put in manually but that will come later on in the video once I am in cruise and I'm airborne as you can see there's no altitudes in as yet um, that's because we haven't set up anything for the as by way of the MCP in terms of speeds headings or anything like that so we are going to come to that now so I'll put this away for now because we're not going to need this until we are actually doing the fuel and the weight and balancing stuff like that so you've got a few buttons here you've got your course you've got your nav source you've got your heading you've got your altitude and then you've got it in duplicate for the first officer side um, your damper goes on which is the YD button my altitude is going to be 19,000 for the flight which is there and now I need to put in my V speeds before I do that I'm just going to put in my roots procedures so we are taking off I said from 09 left using the WRB3Y so I'm going to be taking off on a heading of 091 which I'm going to put here for my heading that's there both on the first officer and captain side of course I'm going to do the same as well but I have to manually put it in for the first officer side and like the heading and for my nav source I am going to change to FMS1 and you would see that this changes to magenta 
to match what my roots will be unlike over here where you're gonna see a blue line or blue arrows and then the X in the middle so I'll do the same over here and I will change that to FMS1 now you're gonna see that there's FMS1 um, there's a nav1 and there's a nav2 nav1 will be if I'm using say doing an ILS approach or nav approach and stuff like that so when I'm coming in for the landing I will change this over to nav2 instead of FMS and I would have um, my frequencies and stuff like that into the aircraft. So going from here, uh, let's show you a couple of tools you're actually going to need because we still haven't put fuel into the aircraft. We still haven't done the weight and balance and um, we still, as a result, haven't done the V speeds as yet because obviously that will be the last portion of the flight planning once you've got your numbers um, you've got your weight and balance and stuff then so let's see here not sure why it's up with GSS but I just ignore it if the passengers never come then we will just um, reset and then just do a push back from there so right I'm gonna minimize this for a second so you can see my desktop because what you need now is two sets of tools the first one you go to where you have your majestic shortcut there we go majestic software and there's gonna be the control panel The second one, since I'm here, I go back to the Majestic um, shortcut again. And for this one, I'm going to go to Documentation Index. This is where I'm going to get my performance from. I deal with Imperial, so I deal with Pounds. If you're someone that deals with Kilos, then you can do Metrics. They're both the same information, just in different um, formats. Um, but I'm more familiar with pounds, so I'm happy to keep it in pounds. All right, so we're going to put aside that for the moment, and we're going to go back to the flight plan, and we're going to go down um, here to get some information. On the control panel, we're going to go to weight and balance. Now I've got all the information put in here because I had to play around with some numbers because SimBrief gives me a random um, zero fuel weight and it wasn't adding up and I'll show you what to look for so you know that the aircraft is configured in a state where it's actually flyable or where it is not flyable and what to do to change stuff so um, if we look at the flight plan we have 40 passengers on I have 40 passengers on in here as well, um, already but if you didn't you're just going to go into these boxes here and put in a number that amounts or totals to the passengers that you have on your flight plan as you can see you've got um, Oscar Alpha, Oscar Bravo, Oscar Charlie, Oscar Delta and then you've got the aircraft separated in these same sections so you know exactly where you're actually putting the passengers so because the plane is very low to the ground when it comes to the nose I will not put many passengers up there and the reason for this is that if you've got it nose heavy and you've put all your weight on the nose you can have um, the nose wheel breaking off on landing um, or collapsing um, depending on how heavy you have there you can put numbers in there but what will happen is once you put the numbers in we do we click on the calculate and then it tells you if you're within limits if you see that it's out of the envelope then you need to readjust where you put passengers where you put load I'm not taking any cargo on this flight so if you look at the flight plan like I said I'm going to show you exactly what you need and where to take it from so 
the first thing here is what your takeoff mass, um, your zero fuel weight is. That for me is 40,990 pounds. You can actually take it from the flight plan as well, um, which is right here. And you put it in this box here. If you look down, you're going to see I've got trip fuel, I've got continuous fuel, I've got alternate, I've got finirest. This is not going to be in the same spelling or the same um, language when it comes to the FMC. So I'm going to show you exactly how to put that in as well. But for right now, we're going to load the aircraft and I'm going to show you that and then go on to that. I'm trying to have a structured path rather than jumping back and forth and then confusing you. So um, for the trip fuel, I've got 2,249 pounds being used. That's what I have here. My takeoff fuel is everything I have on board, every last drop of fuel, which in this case is 5,863 or what you would probably know as your block fuel. So once I have that in, I've got my passengers where I want them to sit, I'll click calculate and you will see these come up, these three things. These are the most important things when it comes to your CFG. Upper limit, if you go anything above these lines, you're in trouble it's going to be red so once you're within this envelope you're fine you can play with the numbers to bring it more forward so in this configuration I'm going to be slightly teal heavy so that is meaning I'm gonna have a nose up altitude when I'm landing I am fine with that but if you wanted it to come forward you can actually play around with the numbers here so instead of having say for example 14 in the back I can put 10 and then I can take that 4 and put in the front so make it 6 still 40 and then I can do a recalculation and you see it's come forward coming forward um, as long as it stays within this envelope which shapes like a ring you're fine going back again anything there is fine it's when it's out of here here or above here then you're gonna have issues with the actual flight dynamics dynamics of the aircraft so that is the aircraft in terms of how I want it to be and what I'm gonna do now is I am going to click send data to flight scene once you do that it's going to be injected into the aircraft but the aircraft is going to be paused so you click P and it will resume you can see I've got my fuel now I've got 2930 pounds in each tank which matches back up with my um, my flight plan and I believe that is everything that I need to do with this so we don't need this again for the rest of this flight actually no I need it once more for landing apologies as I said I haven't flown this aircraft in quite a bit so there are some things that I might forget so I just go back in here go back over to my control panel and it saves it so you don't have to worry that you've lost anything if you accidentally closed it but I'm gonna need figures from here to actually um, do my performance so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go here so this is the default weight that the aircraft comes with I have never changed this before but for some odd reason I thought it was a good idea to change it so let me just move that around so you can see so we've got 4090 so 
we change this so we click on it and I'm taking it from here click enter it drops down we have 40 passengers on board click there it works out the weight I have zero cargo so I'll click on that and I click zero enter for some reason it doesn't like zero so I'm actually just gonna put say one and I leave that there and you see it gives me a zero fuel weight here and what we're going to do now is we're going to take this information regarding to our actual fuel so the fuel on board that i have is 5863 pounds so i start there 5863 i enter that i'm going to go back up here my alternate is 1260 now you can do this in any order that you like it doesn't necessarily have to be the order that I'm doing it in for hold I'm gonna use this line here for continuous which is 523 click enter it drops down to extra for extra I'm gonna use the fine rights which is 1431 okay so you would have seen that when I put in how much fuel I was taking on board it gave me a gross weight of 54,244 pounds this is the only thing that I need here going forward in terms to work out my actual um, V speeds so we're gonna to come to the documentation that I had before which is this handy document here it works out my speeds for takeoff as well as for landings you've got the upper portion here for takeoffs which is obviously going to be the first part of the flight and then you've got it here for landings I do not ever take off with five flaps I always take off with ten and unless it's a ridiculously short runway I will land with 15 flaps so it's only this portion here that I'm actually interested in for the takeoff so I've got a gross weight of 54,244 pounds the speeds that the weights that I have to work with is 53,000 and 57,000 because I'm higher than 53,000 I'm gonna go with the speeds for 57,000 if you look at the altimeter here it shows with uh, my 30.12 set I'm actually at 200 feet above uh, mean sea level and when I look at the weather here it shows me that my temperature is 22 degrees so I need all that information here and you see on the left side of this chart I have below 20 degrees and then above 20 degrees for the outside air temperature that's what the OAT stands for so I'm using this line here with 57,000 for my speeds and because I am over 20 degrees Celsius I'm at 22 I'm gonna use the speeds here for 2,000 feet which is only a difference of one knot but I use the higher one because I'd rather be um, faster than slower for takeoff so I've got V1 as 118 I'm gonna use the higher number always and this is also going to be my VR speed as well so to put in your speeds you're actually gonna click on this button down here by the speed bug it says select you click that and then it brings v1 so I'm using 118 knots 
just roll your mouse until you get to it and then I'm going to go to VR so up here I'm looking now for the VR which is 128 knots it's the same thing as VFry so VFry and VR will be the same speed now what you would have noticed because within the time that I looked away it's no longer highlighted you click select and it will highlight V1 again click it again and then it brings you to VR so then I'm gonna do I think it was 128 128 for V2 as well so these two speeds will be the same I believe yeah these two speeds are the same so you've got your V1 which is your decision and then you've got your rotate and your V fry which is VR and V2 and then so that's the 128 and then there's the V climb which is the speed that I'm going to retract my flaps at and climb well actually no it's the speed that I'm actually going to retract my flaps at it's not going to be my climb speed I'm going to climb roughly about 190 um, so that will be my last speed here click through again so 148 then I'm going to climb at 190 now this is just a number that I'm happy to climb at because it allows me to have my nose not too high up and I don't have to be pulling back on the power so that I don't bust through the speed for underneath 10,000 feet now what some people do uh, what is advice is you can actually set here the decision height and some people set it to like a thousand in this case it would be 1200 and that's when they do um, they switch to the acceleration speed of what they're going to be climbing to so like the 190 knots that I will be doing usually they do it at a thousand feet above the airport so generally I don't do it if you're someone that want to show where your acceleration speed is you can do this just remember to set it back for landing for what your minimums is for the approach that you're actually doing otherwise you're gonna have minimums being called at 1200 feet when it should really be around 200 feet or something like that so I've got that here in I'm just gonna move this aside for one second we're gonna come back to this and we're gonna put all this information over onto the first officer side but for right now what I'm going to do now is go back to the MCP and make sure that I have everything in so I've got my V speeds in which is fine so that's all taken care of what I need to do here now is I'm gonna click on the IAS and you're going to see it comes up with wing level indicated airspeed 30 on the nose down wheel I'm gonna rotate this until I get the 190 knots which is my, cli my um, climbing speed once the flaps have been retracted so there we go and then I'm gonna go back to my altitude because right now you will see here my altitude is 19,000 feet now on a modern gen like the Airbus or the Dash 8 that is sufficient enough and when you get at 19,000 feet the autopilot will hold the altitude that will never happen with the Dash 8 you actually need to click on alt select otherwise it's going to just blow straight through the 19,000 feet and keep climbing until it can't climb anymore all right so that takes care of your MCP
until we've started if you want you can click on your fin um, on your nav now and this doesn't have a VNAV like the like the jets as well so it's LNAV which will be lateral navigation so the plane will fly the route that you have there once you put on the autopilot VNAV is controlled by you personally you're the VNAV you have to make sure that your speed doesn't run away and you have to make sure it doesn't get too slow as well it's not an aircraft that you can actually walk away and do stuff and come back and everything will be fine chances are you'll find that the plane might have crashed if you did that the VNAV pretty much relates to when you're actually descending so we're gonna set it up once we're in cruise so you see how that comes into play I won't do it here now because I'll probably be playing around with it longer than I plan to it's a lot harder to do it when you haven't started a flight than when you've started a flight and you're in cruise so you're almost finished setting up so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do that cross fill that we were talking about so I'll pull up the first office sign and remember this is where you actually want to do the cross fill from you want the FMC that has nothing to pull from the FMC that has everything so the captain has everything put in both the fuel as well as the flight plan so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a cross fill first and we're going to do a cross fill of the flight plan it says cross fill receive in progress and then when it's done it's going to bring you back to this page again and then I'm going to do the same thing for fuel and likewise once it's finished it brings you back to this page to confirm that the information is in there you click on flight plan and the information indeed has come over and if you wanted to you can click on fuel and you can see I've got my gross weight there I've got my fuel here as well and again this is where I'm going to go to when I want to see um, what the weight of the aircraft is for performance this is for both for taking off and obviously as I fly this number is going to decrease so I'll go back to this for landing because the flight is so short it's not going to re really make much that um, of a difference in terms of the weight because we're not going to burn off that much fuel but we've got the fuel here we've got our rear point WRB now sometimes you're going to find that when you've got your flight plan in the line is not magenta here to your next waypoint so then you do a DTO and select number two to make sure that the aircraft knows to go to um, your next waypoint but as you can see it's here already saying going to WRB and it's in magenta if it was white then you will have to do that so that's fine for now okay all right so let's see we've got the weather in we've got our V speeds in we've got our MCP setup we've got our climb speed we've got the altitude so that's pretty much everything almost pretty much everything um, for departure now the information that you have here you want to have over here but part of the startup you don't have to do this uh, if you want to go through the floor like how the pilots would in real life then what you do is at some point you're going to open this here and you're going to click this to see the rise in pressure to make sure that your hydraulics are fine it's supposed to go up to wrong here and then as part of your checklist you would um, call out that number to your first officer if I can just click it back there we go so 
starting engines is a matter of preference you can either start with number one or you can start with number two but because we're going to do a push back it means that we're not going to have power so what we're going to do now is we're going to take off the main bus tie and then we're going to start the APU so we do that by clicking power and you can see some lights flashing across shortly there we go then you can click start now that's going to remain that color because the ground power unit which is this square right in front here has not been disconnected so I'm gonna to go to data go to services and I'm gonna cancel my GPU and in a few seconds you're gonna see it disappear there we go so that's disconnected I can click on generator that comes on GSS still has to come so I'm going to actually cancel that circulate air and we're gonna shut the aircraft up we should hear the APU starting and we're not hearing it Still not sure why that's not doing that. Anyways, we don't need it to actually start the aircraft. We can go back to just so we can go back to the It's actually on for some reason I'm not hearing it. Okay. So let's see. Close doors. Exits. Again, this is a little bit finicky. I start with half bag to close. And it close half packs, so I'll try half bag again. closes it and then the front door to close as well good we're all closed up so once you're at the gate and you're going to be starting engines you're going to go to right for your anti-collision lights that's right so we go to red. Flick up red. When you're about to take off, then you go to white. So that's when you're done by the runway. Pilot side window heat is on. I'm going to reset. Actually, I don't have to. It was on the boarding. So I'm just going to click for prepare for pushback. One thing that I didn't do was my 
weather radar check you're going to find out when you turn weather radar on this again is another bug it's not going to go on it's just going to be doing a test so you have to turn it off and then turn Hello, it back Captain, on again. You're ready for pushback. I don't have my checklist in front of me, which is unlikely, but it'll work with what we have. Fast and seat belts are on, no smoking is on, emergency lights are armed, got anti collision light on. Everything looks fine up there. And we are taxiing to runway 09F, I think it was. Zero nine left. So nose left. To your right. check completed. I have been inserted. And just put the route in. Zero nine right. left. Beacon is on. Release parking brake. Parking brake is released. All engines clear. Start at will. Now we're on push. At this point, you can start engines. To do that, select engine 2, in my case, to on arm. Click start. You can see the engine starting to spool up. You don't have to wait, you can go straight into start and feather. Aircraft will start at that point. Yes, it's a push it back on the line, but here we are. It's not too bad, anyways. Set parking brake. Okay, so parking brake set. Amber light comes off. I'm gonna click back on this to bring back my yoke. Now, in, in real life, what happens is at this point, they actually take the power of the number two engine and put it to minimums, which is 850 power setting. I won't do this because I only have one control to control the throttles. And if I move my controls now, it's going to move the engine that hasn't started also to 850 power so because of that limitation what i do is i would start my second engine by changing it to lap one norm click on start and then once that has started i will then put both engines to 850. If you have um, two throttle controls, then you can do it just like how the pilots would do it in real life. But rather than me having to be playing around trying to get them sick again and stuff like that, I do it that way. Up to now, my control has always been on feather, even though you're not seeing that in the same because of that limitation. So once I've got that there, you're going to see that most of the lights have um, gone out. So what we're going to do now is advance to 850. Just lovely summary does that. Just advance to 
and then I'm going to turn off my APU. What I always do as well, I'm not sure if this is correct or not, but it saves me a lot of hassle. What I do is I turn on my ice protection on fast. That way if I come into any kind of icing, the aircraft already is prepared for it. I'm going to put on my bit of static heat. And these are going to go off of the inboard anti skate. That's the one that I miss. So that's that here. So the only thing left is my park and brake. And that's exactly what you want to see at this point. Now, if you want to do your control checks, what you do is you take off the control lock. You've got this here. So left, the yoke moves left. Now center, right, elevator up elevator down and that saves you the hassle of finding out when you get there that you've got a control issue like I had when as I tried going to Barcelona now um, back to the weather radar I've just put it on there but you're not you're seeing it here now Actually, it's not going through the test, which is fine. Over here now, to get this electrical systems moved off of the first officer, what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and you're going to take system and put it onto nav. And there we go. Now, the first officer usually doesn't have weather radar on both. You can change that to terrain if you like by just clicking on weather terrain button which is here or you can leave it it's pretty much down to what your preference is so taxi light is on and we're going to toss it to the runway for your transponder it's a via it's a IFR flight so you just click on here and then you can tune it to 2000 the top button deals with the small the numbers on the right side the bottom part of the button actually deals with the numbers on the left side you click on it again and you see it goes up and then you keep your the button depressed for it to actually be armed so even though you've put it up there you might see it says standby still you just keep it depressed to change it and we are going to taxi out to the runway now so we're pretty much going to follow this taxi taxiway lima one into lima then down to golf and then we're going to line up on runway 09 left. So Parker breaks it down. I put back my control lock. With this aircraft, you hardly do any braking with the actual brakes. You pretty much use the power levers to slow the aircraft down. And you hear that light like now with the different engine um, sounds. So I'm actually just going to put this here. So I know exactly where I'm going. You want to taxi this aircraft around say 10 knots in turns. And then after that you can go up to like 20 knots anything more than that and it becomes a little bit unstable for taxi go back 
sorry, I've got my dog coming in for attention every now and then. She's such a cat at times. So I'm gonna put in my flaps for 10. This is actually my second favorite airport in Europe because I go to Hanover usually twice a year this year because of corona i'm actually only going in december but my family actually just came back last week from there and they'll be going with me again in december as well getting a little bit away from us but that's fine it's 15 knots once it gets to 20 I'll slow it down a bit actually it won't get to 20 but I'll slow it down a bit because we've got a turn coming up um, just opposite the runway um, 09 Charlie which is on our right so it's this next turn that's coming up so I'll slow it down a bit what you're actually hearing is the propeller blade angle changing slightly so once it changes it's cutting the air at a different angle you hear this difference in sounds we're now doing something like 10 knots which is fine and you'll see like right here where it says propeller ground range you'll see that Approaching that is changing zero nine center so that's zero nine center. I believe that would be for like small general aviation aircraft. I'm too big for that, so I'll go here. It's actually at one a.m. here, and I would have actually loved to do this at night. See how it's like but you guys will lose most of what I'm actually saying so for you guys to follow along and understand everything then um, I opted to keep it in daytime which is probably going to tickle Michael a bit because I'm always giving him grief about not flying the correct time but I think I should get a pass considering that I'm doing a tutorial aircraft is so old today this is still my favorite aircraft in the same once you've gotten the hang of flying this plane it is so rewarding when you actually land and complete a flight with it than it is with any other aircraft just because of how much work you actually have to put into the whole flight in comparison to um, any other modern the um, aircraft so there is a sense of accomplishment now one thing that the dash it will suffer from that you wouldn't find just suffering from is the turning tendency uh, what happens is because the props bite into the wind um, on takeoff the nose tends to turn to the left on takeoff and then you'll find that if you're landing the nose turns to tend to the right so to come back that we've got a button in the cockpit 
which is rudder trim and what it does essentially is it allows the pilot to set the nose a little bit from well you can set it either to where it is zero which means that the plane is pretty much just come to a stop here stop later on so I'll be stopping and do our checks which allows the plane to either be bang on like it is right now and you will know this because this is how it looks when there's zero trim in you can trim to the left or you can trim to the right because the plane is going to want to turn to the left on takeoff we're actually going to trim it to the right a couple of degrees and to do that we're going to go to this button right here and right now it's neutral so we're going to trim it to the right let's say five degrees and once we're taken off you're going to see that this part is the rudder and this part is the nose of the airplane and you'll see that this will be offset a little bit and then once we are in cruise we'll then put it back again so we're gonna do our final checks so what we're gonna do now is that slide is gonna be off landing lights on we're gonna change the light to white for the anti-collision strokes on which will be the anti-collision I haven't done this in ages so again forgive me if I skip something I'm trying my best here right so that looks about right we can line up on the runway now just get comfortable in my seat Instead of going all the way down, I'm just going to take the exit here and put that on the auto. At this point, what I'm going to do is I am going to put my bodies on and then set them to minimum. That way, I have as much power as I can get from the aircraft as I possibly can for taking off. Here, we're going to set our props for full power, so that's going to go straight up to 900, I believe it is. Sorry, 1020. 900 is what we're going to bring it back down to. Down here, we're gonna have the standby hydraulic pressure on. We're gonna have the fuel tanks on as well for both. And then we're gonna have the propeller um, auto feather set as well. 
this button you can actually change the flight but if you ever forget that it's gonna automatically change on once you add enough power to the aircraft on runway, zero, nine, left. On so now runway, let's say everything we're zero, good to go so nine, control lock removed left. power off and on brakes we're lined up and we are ready for takeoff so um, actually the TCAS. There we go. So that's on. It won't make a difference for this flight on because runway. I'm not on VATS. Zero, nine, left. So on what runway. we're going to do is Zero, we're going to take off nine, and I'm left. going to fly this city. So just to give you an idea. Flight plan. So on course for 091 degrees until 600 feet. Then at 600 feet, we are going to make that turn to DV103. On runway, zero, see here. Nine, so left, 600 feet, we are runway, at 200 feet. Zero, so we're going to make a turn nine, at 400 feet. Left. This should be fine. So power's on. Watch, you're gonna see it turns to flight automatically. See, there we go. Engines are stable. We're then going to start to bring back our flaps. There we go. Power back. a little bit off to the right it's not that big a deal we wait until the turn is finished and then we can do the rudder trim again so after takeoff checklist landing gear is up flaps are retracted we're climbing at 190 knots at 1700 feet per minute and we're going to be going up to 19,000 feet altitude set select is set so it doesn't go through the 19,000 looking back here at Aviasoft you see that the transition level is 5,000 feet so we're coming up to that now so we're going to set that back to standard for congratulations we are airborne and we are on our way to Stuttgart a couple more things to be aware of the FMC does not automatically 
change the page so once it gets down once it gets down to Ibana we will change the page otherwise we it won't continue following So as you can see my pitch now is um, 0 0.3 degrees when you you have to take this into consideration when you're flying online and ATC gives you climb instructions because you need to be doing at least a minimum 500 feet per minute and that's not what I'm doing right now but it's neither here nor there because this is just for the sake of teaching you how to actually fly the aircraft but you need to take this into consideration if you're flying in an online environment and ATC gives you um, an altitude to climb to you cannot be climbing at 0.3 per minute it's, it's not ideal so you might want to increase your speed in increments rather than going straight to 40 you might tell it go to 200 knots and then 210 when you get there that way you're still keeping your climb rate up at the moment i'm doing 700 feet per minute so that's not too bad and then once i get to 240 it's then going to increase and continue to increase my climbing rate until it can't get any more out of the engines basically it's going to hold this 240 but remember that I said that this aircraft is not like the jets that you're accustomed to so once you get into cruise you need to manually adjust the power otherwise it is going to go past 240 if it can I can 
give it a little bit more rider trim. Just gonna take out some. That's dead on center there. When we are in cruise again, we will actually change it back so that it's neutral because then you wouldn't have the aircraft turning to the left anymore. Now, if you had forgot to take on the lease off of minimum, what would happen is around this point you will start getting alarms so you need to remember to take the place off of minimums or in some cases what people forget is they keep the air conditioning off and they keep the recirculation on or vice versa any of those would result in you actually getting warnings now the only warnings that I should get which I probably won't get on this flight because I don't have a lot of clouds is if the aircraft actually picks up ice so as you can see I am struggling at 700 feet per minute we're only going to 19,000 so I don't really see a need to add um, my power that much I can keep my throttles at max but I'm keeping my power at 900 and then again once I get into cruise I bring my power back down to 850 and then I would adjust the throttles for speed so props for power throttles for speed remember that when you're actually flying this aircraft it's not the other way around you don't do power for speed and throttles for power it's, it's something to get your head around but props for power throttle for speed What I'm going to do, because it's probably going to take us a couple seconds, is I'm actually going to break the video at this point. And once we are in cruise, or actually when we're getting a little further into the flight, I'll come back and I'll show you how to set up the aircraft for the arrival, um, how to set up your top of descent because it will not automatically show on this aircraft and then how to tune the ILS and then how to when to switch from following the FMS to nav so that you're actually following what the ILS is actually telling you to do so I will end the video here and I'll come back to you a little bit as we progress in the flight just for the sake of time management Welcome back guys, we are just climbing through 18,000 feet, so just 900 feet more to go and then we will be at our cruising altitude. Now remember like I said before, you need to make sure you have all select, just having the 19,000 showing here is not going to be enough, it will continue climbing through um, past 19,000 if it can. So. Click Alt Select on the MCP right here. Once it's showing here, then you know that it's not going to bust your altitude. It will be the same thing for descending. Um, so, if for example, ATC tells you to descend down to 17,000, you change to 17,000. The Alt Select is going to auto automatically move. You click again just to put it back there, and that way it's going to hold your altitudes. Now. This is the point um, once we get into our cruise that we're going to adjust adjust our throttles back that way we are not going to overspeed the aircraft and even though that I will have 240 here it is not going to adhere to that any longer it will only do that in the climb 
from now on I am actually going to have to set my throttles so that it is not going through um, my speed. Now what you would have noticed now is once I've gone to my altitude the oscillate has disappeared. That is fine as long as it was on before it got to its altitude so it's not going to go past 19,000 now. If I didn't have it, it will continue climbing as long as it can climb. But now what you're seeing is that my speed is increasing. So at this point, I am going to bring my throttles back to 850. And then I'm also, sorry that's my props back to 850. And then I'm going to reduce the throttle so that I don't go through this red line any time that you fly through this it's bad this is where you can cause structural damage to the aircraft it's not model but you will have the aircraft screaming at you all the way so i'm just going to easily bring my throttles back till the speed stops increasing and then i'm going to add a little bit more because right now you can see it is slowly increasing so let me decrease a little bit more and it should be fine now I'm going to keep monitoring this because it will change as the flight progresses sometimes it will increase sometimes it will decrease the aircraft is not going to fly at any specific speed that you would put in into the um, FMC and MCP at this point it will pitch for it but then it can either be under speed or over speed and that's where you as the pilot comes in so um, what I do at this point is I'm going to set up the aircraft for landing even though that I am far out and then what I'll do is I'll break the video again so we took off from Hanover and we still have all of this to go so we now have 168 miles to go and while it might sound like it's not that far to go because this plane flies this slow it's actually quite a ways to go whereas in a uh, Boeing or uh, Airbus you probably make that in like 20 minutes and change so this is why I was telling you about the FMC we are on the last waypoint um, on the screen and we've got 2.3 miles to go before we go on to the next one and it will automatically go to the next one in the FMC but the screen will not change it's still going to show me what I'm seeing here so again me as a pilot have to be on top of this and change so as you see it's gone just click on next and you'll see it there again and uh, when you get onto Abumo you'll do the same thing again so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to set up my uh, landing so first of all let's see here scroll through you can either use nets or you can use flight plan so I've got the ILS for runway 07 and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring up Navigraph because for some reason I didn't notice but my attitudes didn't go in here so I'm just going to tell it that to be at 19,000 so I click here I pay 19,000 I enter and that's fine so I'm doing the circuit which is Echo Delta Delta Sierra Runway 7, so I'm looking for ILS 07. And we are going to 
going to Phaeter. have to be above 3400 I'm gonna keep it at the same altitude as Vader so I'm gonna put LBU there as 4000 feet Enter. all right so I've got LBU in and what I'm gonna do now is I am going to click on the VNAV button and it's gonna say from present position which is 15.7 miles to Bebta I'm going to click on to Bebta and I'm going to change it to LBU by clicking the number 9. Click enter. It already has the altitude that I've just put in there which is 4000 and now it's asking me at what rate I want to descend to. I'm going to change this now to say 1500 feet per minute and then I'm going to hit enter. And that is how 
I put in where my top of design is so just to go over once more when you are doing this with whatever your flight plan is you look for your last waypoint for before the ILS you can either use your initial approach fix and then get down to it I just got a stick there um, or if it is that you have Navigraph is white one. Or if you don't have your initial approach for in, you can put, insert all those waypoints. I don't want to play around with inserting waypoints because it's something that I haven't done too often in this aircraft, and I don't want to be just playing around and taking away from the video as is. So what I've done is. I've got LBU here, which is part of my flight plan. So we're coming from Babso, and then we're gonna fly to LBU, and then from LBU, we're then gonna make our way onto the ILS for 07 and land. We've got our MSA, which is 3400, so I've made sure that I'm above that. So I've used the same altitude for Vader, which is my initial, uh, final approach fix. Um, which is 4,000 feet, I've used that for LBU as well, so there's no descending to that point except when I'm established on the ILS. So as far as setting up for the arrival, um, in terms of the actual FMC, that is all you have to do. And what's going to happen now is if you change the range on this, so let me just close this one here. If you change the range on this and extend it out, you're going to see a circle here. And then you see the word TOD. So that is where my top of descent is. If you did the same thing over here on the first officer side, it will not show. And doing a cross fill will not help. So in that case, the same thing that I've done over on the first captain side, I am going to do on the first officer side. So again, um, VNAV from present position two, click the two, and then you're going to look for LBU because we were further back. LBU then was nine. This time it is now um, eight. So I put in number eight, click enter. Oh, the reason why this is showing like this is because I never put in LBU for 4,000. So it doesn't know what altitude is actually going down on for the first officer side. So let's see here, cross fill. here and now you see the 4,000 is there it's asking for 1,800 feet I'm going to change it to 1,500 to match what I have on the captain side click enter and that's me all sorted on both and you would see on the first officer side if I now increase the range I now have the top of the side on here as well which I wouldn't have if I didn't manually put it in. Nice airport beneath us. That's Frankfurt that's beneath us. I kind of guessed that though because of the performance in this area. So, like I said, that's everything for the MCP. So now what you're going to do is you're going to tune your radios. And to do that, you're going to need this frequency here, 116.85. I'm going to confirm this as well. The localized is 109.5, so let me just go back here. ILS 09, confirm it. Yes, ILS is 109.5. Um, 
Stuttgart VRR is the 116.85. I can put them in both radios, so I'll put the 109.5 as my primary, so that's going to go over here. So I click on here. activated for nav 1 I can do the same for nav 2 but again I usually don't do that so let's see if I can do it over here so for nav 2 on this one I would change that to the initial approach fix that's wrong window so the, that will be 116.85 for start there 6.85 and I click on top so now it's the primary one in nav 2 now you have to be very careful with this because when you're switching nav sources you want to make sure that you're on the correct nav source so for your approach you only want to be on your primary one for nav 1 which is the 109.5 I've put in the 116.85 just for reference because in some cases you need to do both I don't need to use both for this actual flight so I'm going to be descending down to 4,000 feet. So what I'm going to do is on my altitude, I'm going to change that to 4,000 feet. And again, I'm going to choose Alt Select. Now we are a ways away from the top of the sink. So again, I am going to stop the video here. And then just when we are coming to the top of the sink, I'll show you what to expect, what to do, and then we can get ready for landing the aircraft. So I'll see you in a bit again. Okay guys, we are a little bit closer to our top of descent, and a couple things you would have probably noticed by now. One, you've got that letter V, and then a pink magenta bar here. Now this is going to be your source for VNAV, so once it starts to descend, you can actually click the VNAV button and then it would use this to follow all the way down to 4000 feet. Now there's a caveat here and it could be because of my inexperience, but what I have noticed is that if you have altitude restrictions on the way down, the aircraft will not stop at those altitude restrictions it will continue going down and ignore those so be mindful of that when you're flying on that sim I have not figured out a way for it to actually follow the altitude restrictions so you might opt not to follow this when you're flying online with that sim or iVail depending on what your preference is you would have also have noticed that I have not done my performance for landing and the reason for that is I wanted to do a little bit more fuel burn before I actually put that in so we're gonna do this now so we get rid of this and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on fuel and I'm gonna click on it until I get to page 4 I believe perfect and that gives me my gross weight which is 52,217 pounds what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to that page with the performance and now I'm going to go down here. We're going to use a flaps 15 for landing because it's quite a nice long runway. We don't need to use anything more than flaps 15. So 
our weight 52,200 pounds we're going to use the 53,000 mark here so our approach speed is 117 our VRAP speed is 117 and if we should need to go around the lowest that we should get is 107 knots so we're going to go back in I wasn't paying attention so I'm actually going to click on VNA we should have done that before because as you would have seen the VNAV has dropped so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do click VNAV is it doing it so I'm going to do a VS power throttles back and I'm going to try to catch that VNAV bar so I'm doing 15 let's do it to 1500 for descent and once that bar is in the center then I'll click the VNAV again because for some reason it's not taking the VNAV so I'll switch over now so it should once it catches back and that's the thing here as you would have seen it would have jumped from all the way there back to here so now it's back on the VNAV path this again is a bug sometimes it jumps so you have to be mindful of that I'm gonna bring my throttles back a bit because I'm getting a bit faster as well so I can leave that now and let's go back to our performance so we're now 52,100 we're going to use the 53,000 speed which um, sorry weight which is 117 knots so here for speeds we're going to select 117 I tend to go a little bit faster for the approach so I'll keep it at 130 for the approach and then I use the 117 landing you can do the 117 if you like I just prefer to err on the side of caution so the whole time descending um, along the ILS I'm going to be at 130 until the last waypoint on the ILS and then I'm going to slow down to 117 by then I'm going to be on manual power settings anyway so it wouldn't make that much of a difference um, to what I actually put in there this is just a guide to remind me actually what speed I'm going to be landing at now we will keep it on VNAV until we get to the 4,000 feet and then from there we're gonna switch nav sources as well so go back to flight plan and update that Now, for the, remember that we said we're going to be using 15 flaps. You're going to see that the landing flaps with the GPWS, apologies for the sticking. You're going to see that the GPWS landing flap says 10. We need to change this to 15. Otherwise, we're going to have a flap warning going off all the way down, even if we select the flap 15 um, for the flaps. If we don't select the GPS landing flap for 15, you're going to get that warning as well. So guys, that is it. We are set up for the landing now. I'm noticing that there's some steep turns, so I'm not 100% sure if the autopilot can handle these turns. But we just enjoy the view down now and if need be we can always take control especially when it comes to this turn here this is a very sharp turn this is like it's a lot more than 90 degrees you're looking at blah, 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 blah. I don't know but it's a very sharp turn 
other pilot might not be able to handle that and I am almost a hundred percent sure other pilot is not going to be able to handle this one here to line up on the approach for the runway 7 again apologies for the sticking um, I don't know what's going on with P3D but my performance isn't the greatest at the moment and I've promised to do this video for ages and haven't gotten through to it so I'm just trying to get it in because in two weeks time MFS 20 will be actually my main thing so all this while done just remember to keep monitoring your speeds and adjust your throttles to suit. Remember throttle is for speed and then prop is for power. So when you want to slow down you're using your throttles. Now that kind of changes a little bit when you're on approach but normally for the most of the flight it's throttles for your um, speed and then your props for your power. Now if you don't have your props set on your hardware as if it is on the actual console here what you inadvertently do sometimes is you bring the throttles back too far and if that happens you're gonna get a kind of whistling alarm so I'll do it here that's it way too far back so usually you want to have your throttle sync if you can like I said I've tried it before and I haven't so right around here will give me the speed that I want I don't want to be descending past 250 as we're approaching 10,000 feet so 10,000 your landing lights come on lights back on as well now something else to keep in mind as well this aircraft does not land like your traditional jets with the jets whether they be the 747, the 737, the A320, the, uh, the MD80s or whatever once you get to about between 150 feet you pull the power all the way back if you should ever do that with this aircraft it does a great simulation of a rock and it drops it literally drops out of the sky so you have to consciously tell yourself that you're not pulling the power back and fly the aircraft all the way down to the ground with power in when your wheels have touched the ground then you reduce power and in most cases you don't even have to go to reverse thrust you can just put it in disc and that would be enough to slow the aircraft down um, get in quite close to that area V anyway shouldn't be exceeding so I've cut my power a bit more my throttles rather I gotta keep correcting myself there because in jets I'm just thinking power whereas with the turbo props it's both power and throttle so we're gonna look here to see what our transition altitude is for Stuttgart it's 5,000 feet we are at 7,000 so shortly we're gonna go over to the local QNH which would be 1021 
so that's 5,000 coming up, so let's change it to 1021. Here's where things are going to get very interesting. First, for this bank, so you've noticed that I've slowed my aircraft as much as I possibly want to at this point. So, 150 knots should be okay for taking that turn. Obviously, the faster you are, the wider your turns are going to be, and I want to keep it as neat as possible for this. Otherwise, it can get a little bit messy. What I'm going to do at this point is I am going to go to flaps 5. Add a bit of power so it doesn't get too slow. Here's our turn. see the 117 knots that we are using for the landing is just above the speed that the plane drops out of the air and that's why I tend to keep it a little bit higher until I actually um, just about to f um, flare and the reason for this is because of wind if I have a gust of wind I'll probably jump above the 117 but if the wind dies down suddenly the plane is going to drop and that is something that you don't want that's why you find that in a lot of the other planes there's a plus 5 to work with as a buffer the standby hydraulic pressure on again you're going to put the fuel tanks on for landing as well as the auto feather I put the auto feather on it might be something that is not necessarily needed because I've seen two different takes on it 
it doesn't make a difference here or there in the same for me obviously in real life that is something completely different but for the sake of this I put it into I put the auto uh, feather select on and I keep that on next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my blades down to minimums and this is just in the case I have to do a go around that I have all the power available to me for the aircraft as you can see I have kind of a nose of altitude kind of that is perfectly fine our runway and when we get on the approach I adjust my power setting back to max power So this, we're getting very close to the point where I will be switching over from FMS over to NAV1, not NAV2 because NAV2 is on the VOR for LDU, which is not the localizer. So I can actually move this one to NAV1, which is just one turn, and you see that everything is etched out. Once I get on to the approach, that X is going to be removed, and that's what I'll be using for guidance. And I, because of how steep that angle is, what I might actually do, because I don't want the aircraft making a sharp turn like that, what I might actually do. is shallow the turn so I could go to a heading that's not a heading that's something I shallow it out a bit like this so that it's not such a steep turn on final otherwise what's going to happen is I'm going to blow right through it and then it's going to get a bit messy There's a 4,000 on my altimeter, but I'm here in 2,500. 2,500 feet is the distance between me and the ground. So that's AGL. Whereas the 4,000 feet is between me and mean sea level. headwind once we line up on the runway 
I'm just going to change my this to zero if I have it already. Perfect. Alright, so let's bring the aircraft in now for F-107 Add a bit of power because we're getting slow Alright, so let's do this So you can see the axis have gone now So I can actually switch to Nav-1 Hit the approach button below so I'm gonna actually manually fly it down so this can the autopilot reduce power reduce throttle sorry max power gear down On. and at this point now because I have more power in I'm now using my throttle a bit more say that you should always reset your minimums I haven't but it's a clear day so that's fine so I have my minimums actually in there at 1200 feet minimums 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 okay. continue minimums. we are landing I remember that you're keeping power all the way in so uh, I'm reducing my throttles to get to around 117 flaps. knots flaps. there's the warning for the flaps 15 knots sorry 15 flaps So this is going to be a long landing, so forgive me. As long as we don't bounce, it's all good. Watch your speed when landing. Unstable. Caution, 
50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Now we are down. Then you bring the power back. I just have this gonna and I don't have um, nine hundred meters I don't have reverse remaining first. and that's it welcome to Stuttgart change flight to taxi ladies and gentlemen welcome to our primary aircraft up this can change now to right Taxi on. Please continue to observe the non-smoking sign. On behalf of our airline, we would like to say goodbye to you now. It's a so. pleasure having you as our guests, and we look forward to welcoming you on one of our aircraft again. Thank you and good luck. Uh, let's see where we are going today. was absolutely horrific but you guys got the idea the autopilot this the aircraft is not capable of doing auto landing to the best of my knowledge so um, it's still a little bit weird for me for doing um, instrument approaches so I usually have flight them in any case got a bit distracted but that's fine eventually made it down back to normal start APU watch what I'm doing and stay on the taxiway you can hear the APU starting up now which is what I missed in the beginning you can actually feather one of the engines if you like and just do single engine taxi it's gone back up but um, it does get a little bit interesting if you do decide to go single taxi single engine taxi depending on which airport you're at So that's it guys, I hope that this video has ended up being um, informative to you and it does help you in learning the aircraft or point out things that you might not have been aware of. As I said, I'm not a real pilot on this aircraft so there are certain things that I might have done that is out of sync of what you as a real pilot might. This is basically what I do to get from point A to point B without any kind of mishaps, um, alarms and stuff like that. So I hope that this was able to help you guys if you're new to the aircraft. And if you're not new to the aircraft, I hope that it might have shed some light on a few things. Um, one, how not to fly an approach. Um, but it's on a serious note. On how the actual systems for the airplane actually works and how to always try to be ahead of the aircraft even though I did, might have done a bad job on that part in a few steps along the way so as always guys it has been a pleasure thank you very much for tuning in 
and I will catch you in the next video what video it will be will be anyone's guess but more than likely we'll be looking at GA flying a lot more than we did before and I might probably do um, a video on FS economy should I take this one here Okay, parking brake on, controls lock on, both engines on further, we've got the APU on, we can actually turn the anti-ice off, can turn the heat off, put a socket and that off as well. And let's say for the sake of argument, it's three minutes that we have since we've been touched down, so we kill the engines at this point. And he's good off. Since we opened the forward one, anti collision light off, see that was off. And that's it for us, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, have a good evening, and see ya.